My name's Sam Toller. I'm the 21-year-old writer and director of Alan, an independent feature film that we made for £350 about a 17-year-old who thinks that he's peaked in life and that everything goes downhill from there. Think Skins meets Woody Allen. I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks on cheap and efficient filmmaking and today we're going to focus on the actual production and how to keep things running smoothly and get those shots that you need for your low-budget film. One. One of the first things you're going to have to do after you've written your script is cast your film. You know, find actors to play those characters and you want to find the best actors. You want to find people who really fit into those characters and embody those characters. Um, in terms of getting actors to film those roles, uh, Facebook pages are really good. Um, whatever city you're in, maybe just try typing in, you know, maybe Bristol actors. That's a, a great page that I used a lot to find actors. Um, there's also a great site called Arts Jobs where you can put posts up about, you know, I'm looking for actors and actors will find it and apply to you. Um, best way to do these auditions are video auditions, you know, get people to record something on their laptop, so you send them an extract of the script, they'll record it, send it to you, and that's a really easy and cheap way of letting people audition, and that means you can see loads of different people um, really easily, and you want to see as many different people as possible, because at all actors are different and they'll all bring something different to the role. You might see a character as being really aggressive maybe and then an actor might come along and play it not so aggressive and they'll play it in a slightly different way and you might really like that. So you really want to get as many different people auditioning for your film as possible. Two. One of the other things that you've got to do before you even start filming your film is just make sure the organisation is really really on point. Um, when I made Alan, we had 17 shoot days um, over the period of a year. So it's kind of spaced out very much, but that 17 days where you need to go in on a day, you need to set everything up, you you want everyone to know what they're doing, you need to have kind of schedule the day. You know, there's a lot that goes into a shoot day, so you really need to make sure the organisation is really, really good. Three. One really, really good tip is just networking. Um, this is something you kind of have to do before you've maybe even written the script or definitely before you start filming. But if you can build a network of other filmmakers, other people who are really interested in film and really good at what they do, that means that when you come to make your film, rather than paying people to help you, you know other people like yourself who just want to make films. And with Alan, you know, I didn't pay any of the crew. Um, I wasn't getting paid either. No one, no one got paid for the work that they did. Um, they all did it because they had a passion for film and they wanted the experience. They wanted that thing to be able to put on a CV. And if you can build that network of filmmakers, you can get them all involved. And a lot of the time they'll be happy to help. They'll be happy to, you know, do you a favor knowing that later on you'll do them a favor. Um, that's kind of how it works. So build that network early so that when you come to film, you can just, you know, the right people to ring and go, hey, look, I'm filming this weekend. Can you come and help me out? and they'll be up for it. So make sure you build that network early. Four, in terms of locations, make sure you, what we call, get them locked down as early as possible. Locked down just basically means you've spoken to a person at the location, you've made sure that they know the dates and the times that you want to use it and any requirements you have, maybe at someone's house and you've asked them very politely if they could leave the house for a day out so that you have the house for free. Um, so locking down the location just basically make, means that you know, maybe a week, two weeks in advance, everything that you need for that location is set in stone so that once you know that you have a location on a set day, then you can start focusing on making sure you've got your actors also locked for that shoot day and you've got all your crew and your equipment. And that just it takes the stress off immediately. Once you've got the location locked, it's like the first building block of organizing that shoot day. Um, so get those locations locked as soon as possible. Five. One of the most important things to do before a shoot day or early on in the morning when you first get to a shoot is making sure that all the crew know exactly what they're doing. Making sure everyone knows what role that they're meant to be doing, whether that's um, cinematography or sound. Um, making sure that everyone has the knowledge for what they're doing because sometimes you might be working with people who don't necessarily know too much about sound. So any knowledge or any assistance that you can give them, it's important to give them that. Um, and just especially for cinematography and directors of photography or people holding the camera, just making sure that they know what they're doing. Storyboards are a really good way to assist this because if you can show your cameraman a storyboard and just go, right, this is the bit we're filming now, that will help them understand it and visualize it in their heads and it'll avoid a lot of confusion, save you a lot of time and a lot of hassle. Six, 
With Alan, uh, I kept the cinematography as simple as possible. For me, this was because I kind of wanted to emulate a, a style of directing in a lot of Woody Allen films. Um, kind of very simple cinematography that, again, focuses on the actors and the script. Um, but also, it kind of relates to that, that key phrase, time is money, because time is money. You know, each shoot day that you do, you've got to pay for food, you've got to pay for travel for your actors, because actors should never be out of pocket. Um, if you're not paying your actors, make sure that they're not losing money. They're not losing money on petrol or having to buy lunch because that's the least you can do um, if you're not paying them. But obviously, uh, simple cinematography means that those shoot days, you've got time to focus on the acting and other things rather than getting like loads and loads and loads of shots. So in Allen, we had quite a lot of long takes, scenes that were just kind of set up the camera and let your actors act. And that keeps it simple and it saves time and it saves money. Seven. Um, try and rehearse with your actors before the day of shooting, um, even if that's over Skype. Uh, I did quite a few Skype rehearsals uh, before shoot days on Alan, and it just helps so much because it means that you can direct your actors and you can you can look at their performance and go, okay, that performance was really good, but actually he needs to be a little bit more angry or she needs to be a little more aggressive or something like that. Because actually, if you're doing that on the shoot day, that means you have to watch them perform it and then you go, oh, can you change it? And they're having to think on their feet. Whereas if you can do that a week earlier, that gives them time to really think about the character, get into the character's head, and they'll give a much better performance. And they'll give the performance that you want them to give. And that's what you want them to do. You want them to be able to come in on the day, do their job, give a great performance and leave. And then, you know, you've had a really efficient and cheap shoot day. Eight. This one's really important. Make sure your lighting is good. Um, not everyone has access to really, really expensive lights, and that's fine. Um, uh, but, you know, it's very easy to go to a construction store and you can get construction lights, you know, the kind of things that builders use for like 20 quid and they're quite bright. Um, alternatively, you can also just use your iPhone. You know, the, the light on the back of an iPhone is really, really good. It might be a bit of a weird light because it's only, it's quite blue. You need to think about the colouring of your light because natural light is obviously quite yellow. So keep that in mind. But even with the light on the back of an iPhone, you can get some tracing paper, you can get um, gels or like some maybe some yellow kind of see-through transparent paper and that will change the colour of the light. Um, you can be really creative um, and, you know, without spending a lot of money with lighting. But just think about it because one of the worst things is a film that's lit badly and then you lose everything in the scene. You lose the expression on the actor's face and you lose the, the setting itself. So lighting is a really important thing to think about. Nine. One of the other great things about networking is it will give you access to better equipment potentially. If people that you know have access to good cameras or good lights, that means that they can bring them along and your film is going to look much better. Um, Another really important thing about networking, not necessarily just individual people, but companies as well. If you have any local production companies, um, that's a really good way of getting in touch with uh, other filmmakers, letting them know what you're doing and potentially getting access to equipment. Um, one of the uh, key things with my film, Alan, was that um, at university, I'm part of a student production company which has a lot of that equipment. So, you know, talk to students at universities near you talk to local production companies, see if anyone has equipment that you can use because the better your equipment, the higher your production values and the better your film is gonna look and be in the end. 10. When you're shooting, be really aware of sounds. Um, you wanna kinda look at your location before you shoot and really think about the sounds that you're gonna get. Is it near a busy road? Is it in a flight path? You're gonna have loads of planes coming overhead all the time because Where's that's gonna mean your sound man is gonna be telling you to cut all the time. Um, one really annoying thing that we had on Alan was kind of sounds in the background that we didn't even know were gonna be there. You know, things like wind, which you don't even think about, but like a strong wind will mean that when you go to cut, suddenly there's wind in one shot and you cut to someone else and there's not wind in the other shot. Um, one time we had this kind of weird, it was like a, a flag flapping in the wind, but it meant that in the scene, there's this throughout and then you cut and then it's gone. Um, one of obviously a really good way of getting around that is if you notice those sounds, get your sound man to get some wild track just to record that sound for maybe 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, maybe 
two minutes is a good amount of time to get just general wild track because then what that means is that if there are bits that you're cutting together and the sound changes a little bit that means you can just put that sound that two minutes of sound underneath and keep it really consistent so that the sound never changes too much those are my tips and tricks for low budget filmmaking um, i hope you find them helpful um, the last piece of advice that I want to give is just to go and do it, whether this is your first film, your fifth film, your tenth film, your twentieth film, your most ambitious film, your least ambitious film. Many of you will know you just have to do it. Stop saying you want to be a filmmaker and be a filmmaker. Get on that track, make a film, learn from it, make another film. Get hooked. Do it.